We, we, we interrupt our program with a special bulletin. At the same time, government is even founded to more violence, because no point can say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Right? You yeah. have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give up your property. You still have to give up your money. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice of what to do with your own money, how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes, right? Right, yep. So, so this is how government is a moral IRS. Then. IRS. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. This is how government is a moral then. This organization that calls itself government then only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. So what do you think of that? Oh, I think it's terrible. I, I, you know what you know hurts the most before anybody even gets hurt is they kill you financially. Anything you do. I mean, I got a, I was in the wrong lane turning in New York City, and it's like you got 15 days to respond to a ticket or else it doubles. Okay, well, guess what? I respond in time. The lady at the on the other end of the phone, because I couldn't do it on the computer, oh, your ticket number hasn't been entered yet. So the cop didn't even enter my ticket number. So now what's going to happen? So now I have this like thing dragging on. Right. You have such a bad feeling when something that has to do with court or government. Yeah. You know, because, oh, you missed a court date. Now there's a warrant out for your arrest. You'll know there's a warrant out for your arrest. You're out on a Friday night with your friends. You get pulled over for no reason or maybe even speeding. Yeah. Now you spend the weekend in jail because you're not going to get arraigned to go to court until Monday morning. Right. And you got to pay even more. And you just keep, and that's why people can never get back up because they just keep getting beat down, that's beat right down, true. beat down financially. And then someday it can lead to some sort of violence because they pull you over the car. I mean, that is honest. I mean, you don't pull over because you feel safe or like he's wanted to check. Like, it's not a safety check. He's pulling you over for, for, for victimless crime. Yeah. Right? Yep. It's like, well, here's here's a ticket, right? Make sure you go to court. And when you go to court, that monopoly of law, you know, of course, if you don't say your honor, you don't uh, stand up, if you don't wear the right clothes, it's a contempt of court. Spend a nice night in a cage, yep. right? I don't like the way you're looking. I don't like your attitude, right? The whole thing is set up against you, yep. right? There's no impartial. You're evidence. actually admitting guilt by showing up at court. Right. Yeah. You're saying you're guilty <laughs> by, by going there. Right. Right. And especially if it's for even if you spend like a night in a cage, you have a raiment, you're, you're dressed up, you're handcuffed, you're, you look guilty, right? Yeah. The cops come in there, you know, already you know, with their ties and everything, uh, and if it's a jury uh, selection process, they're gonna look at you automatically guilty, right? Yep. And then the uh, prosecutor will say, well, look. The, the cop here, how can he ever lie? You know, he doesn't really want to be here. Stop. He's here. He's getting paid overtime, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, don't, don't lie about it. Like, don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Like he's here, uh, not spending time at home at his family. Yeah. <laughs> he's there because he's still getting paid, you know, yeah. overtime with that. Yep. Um, so, that's, so that's government. Uh, so when we look at government, what we're trying to do is abolish these organizations. All that government is, they have a monopoly on the services you and I want. I want law. I want roads. I want security. I want, a, I want mail, first class mail. The USPS, they have a monopoly on first class mail delivering pieces of paper. It's illegal and criminal for FedEx, UPS to enter the market to do just that. No one can compete, right? Yeah. ABC, monopoly on distilled spirits, right? No one can compete. So that's all that government is. A monopoly of services which you don't have the economic freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as you would from a real business service or compete yep. entrepreneurially. Like look at OPEC. Yeah, sure, yeah. there's many different gas stations, but behind all those gas stations, you got OPEC right. sitting around deciding what the price of gas should be. Right, yeah. But, but through government, they can pass laws to prevent competitors yep. from entering the market, yep. right? I mean, they, they shored up a lot of money. They could sustain a, a, you know, a little hit. But for you to enter, it's like you, you haven't gone there yet, right? Yep. You haven't had that kind of government uh, immunity from these sort of problems that they pass laws on to you, right? Yep. Permits and licenses discriminate against the poor from competing in that market. Oh, yeah. And they continue to get costlier and costlier and costlier, right? Yep. Oh, that's, there's, <laughs> no, there's no way. Now no one's making any money anyway. So as soon as you start getting beaten down financially, it's like, right. how are you supposed to ever get back? Right, and it, especially when we were talking earlier, like uh, I'll call it economic terrorism, right? That's what it is. Nearly yeah, half your yeah, income. Economic terrorism. Economic terrorism, right? Yeah. Lovely meeting you. Thank you, thank nice. you. Who's this? Pleasure oh, <laughs> 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 meeting you guys. Yeah. See you later. I had a good time with you guys last time. Stay squanchy. So, um, nearly half your income stolen. You add up locals, uh, city, federal, state, uh, income tax, sales tax, imports, Insurance tariffs. Insurance you got to pay for. Right, yeah, you're forced to write. Everything around here has been taxed from the production line, right? Yep. Your, your currency, fiat currency, government money continues to depreciate. That's another tax, right? When you finally get that paycheck, it starts to become even more and more worthless as yep. the years go on, oh, right? Yeah. More taxes. So that's that robs you of the, your economic levers of your power. The more you make, the more they take. Right, yep. right. You look at your overtime on a paycheck. Well, I haven't had a paycheck in 10 years. But right. You look at a paycheck and it's like, now you, like when you're doing overtime, it's like you're working for the government after that. Right. Oh, I'm so much. Here you go.
Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they want your cut. They want their slice. I mean, they're like the mafia. So, like, yeah, yeah. you're doing bad. It's like, well, you know, we, we want a 10% of that, right? You know? Yeah. You know, car insurance is another scam. You keep paying. Let's say my car is worth uh, three thousand dollars. Why on earth would I pay more than three thousand dollars after I paid them three thousand dollars? My car is not worth more than anything else. Right now, to cover somebody else's driving, I think that should be up to the insurance company. That should yeah. be up to the other person's insurance. There, there's the system is so backwards, and it just it's so ridiculous how much people paying insurance and then how hard it is to get that money back from the insurance company when something happens to your car, right? Or when you get a speeding ticket and they all of a sudden your insurance goes up, it's like, come on, we need right. somebody that's going to, we need more insurance companies so they can start competing. Right, for right. And the reason us. you don't, because they can use government legislation to prevent entry in that field. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, of course, many of these companies are subsidized by government, which is why they could continue to exist. That money would have gone to a real estate business that had a good business plan, nope. right? Like nope. Wall Street. It's good that businesses fail. It just means that they can't allocate the resources, right? Nope. But the money they stole from everyone else, that's the money, that's the unseen businesses you can't see anymore, right? Yep. Like if I robbed, like if somebody broke your window and uh, it costs like $100, people oh, at least the, the window maker has money. It's like, no, that's $100 you could have spent on buying a new you know, vest or a tuxedo yeah, or exactly. all other things, right? So yep. that's the unseen or cost. Bills, Bill, right? you're all the bills. Yeah, yep. absolutely, right? Yep. Uh, so w w what do you think about abolishing these monopolies then? Have a real free market based on consent, based on contractual agreements, right? Yeah. There exists no factual evidence of a contractual relationship with government. Yeah. It doesn't exist, right? Break down the government, right? Break Isn't down. essentially what you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and finally have a free society based on consent, thousands of competing communities catering to your life, some preferences. Now you can finally have a community that's 420 friendly, one across the river that's not, right? Yeah. And they have real rules you give explicit consent to, right? Yep. And the rules apply to that community. They don't cross over the river and grow into yours. Like the rules in your room don't apply across the river and, yeah, and, and right. Uh, right, or, or enforce in mine, right? Yeah. So real respect for private property, right? Yeah. No more taxes, no more stolen uh, property, no more uh, violation of self-ownership, right? So that's, yeah. that's what we're on with. I'm called, uh, it's called Liberate RVA. It's a non-political organization. Nothing to do with politics or politicians. We're... we're, we're Tired. We're done with that, right? Yeah. Uh, the government continues to grow higher and higher. Taxes continue to grow more and more. So there's there's no solution for that. The participation in that only legitimizes it and encourages them, right? So we want to create our own community outside of politics and government, and then one day uh, some some plant them, right? Finally, have a transition enough of a community that has real respect for private property and self ownership, and then just uh, transition into abolishing those monopolies. Like a commune. <laughs> Uh, not a commune. I mean, you, you can have no, communes. Like, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, like a town. Yeah, like here, here, here in Richmond. It's it's like the Amish, except there's electricity. Right. I mean, the Amish don't want electricity. That's fine. They could be Lodi, right? That's their preference, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's like the golf course communities, right? They pay a homeowners association to pay for the roads and they have to security. Don't the grass. Right. Yeah. And yeah. everyone's grass looks the same. Yeah. There's only one guy cutting them. Right. The, the guy in uh, the people in Florida, 55 and older communities, right? That's their preference. New yeah. colonists, there's their preference, right? But they all have fundamental respect. Going to a mall, right, has the same rules. They provide a road system. They provide security. They provide free Wi-Fi, right? There's nothing aggressive there. Only except, you know, try this free sample. Oh, my God. Malls are the condos of stores. Yeah. <laughs> stores are oh, who, yeah. Do you, who do you like for, maybe it's too early, but who oh, do you yeah. like for president? None. We don't need a, we don't need a po political ruler, right? That's all they are. A stranger can tell you what you can and cannot do with the property, but you can't tell the politician the same thing, right? Yeah. These are, we're nothing but tax cattle in their eyes. Virginia oh, yeah. is nothing but a tax farm, right? They're, they're the prison wardens of, of, our, of our lives, yeah. dictating and running and ruining it, yep. right? So I say no president, no ruler. We don't need it. We can have rules. We just don't need strangers arbitrarily dictating their own opinion unto everyone else. Yeah, right? Right? Just kind of walk around, wave to the people, I'm doing yeah. fine, we're all doing fine. Living at your expense. Yep. Right? You yep. create real value in the marketplace, and he comes and steals desk, and he can sit lawfully in his office, feet on the desk, and say, well, I'm doing some work. Nobody, there's no demand for that work. You're not creating real value. Yeah, right. Everything government gives away was stolen from someone else. Yeah, that's true. Right? That's true. The <laughs> land we live on. The land. <laughs> the land we live on. Jeez. Everything, yeah, yeah. So, Native Americans were like, oh, look, pilgrims, we should all have a dinner together. And the pilgrims were like, <laughs> Right, and in a lot of places that happened, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, that's, that's the story of government all over the world, right, yep. throughout history. Well, uh, every, yeah, every bit of land was stolen from somebody else. Right. You know? So, yeah. cool, I'm, I'm Cal. Mike. Mike Pleasure, man. Yeah. <laughs> or Rick Sanchez. Cool. Uh, let, let me give you a flyer. We do a lot of meetings, uh, monthly gatherings, and just come together and philosophize as a, as a community. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I wish I lived here. 
Yeah, you can find us on the internet. Is YouTube channels. Is bolt cutters right Yeah, they're bolt cutters. Yeah, break the chains of uh, sadism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure yeah, to meet you. Good. Yeah.